Now this is a classic example of what I try and tell people about traps, how you have to check them all the time. There's been a beast walk up here, he's bumped this with his nose, he's walked over the top and he's put the stamping stick right over the top of the trap. There's the trap there, the other scat there. And quite often people have said to me, why don't you use a drone? You could fly a drone around and check your traps and make sure nothing's in them. And even though it's a good idea, and it could be used in some applications, you couldn't get your drone to go down and shift that stick, right? You couldn't check to see everywhere where the sign was coming on and off the road. Um, you couldn't reset a trap that had gone off. And if there is a dog in it, are you going to shoot it out of the drone? You've still got to go out there, even if it's the furthest trap on your line. Nothing beats going around your traps every day. The sleeping's going. Hey, I should be sleeping too. Another wet old morning. I reckon if we go to get a dog, it'll be from here on in. Uh, there was a dog came past this set down here yesterday. They're probably in the rain and didn't get the scent, so I've uh, put a couple more traps out there. And, uh, fingers crossed. We need a change. We need a change. This is checking after night four. We've only got one dog down. I'm, I'm starting to chew my fingernails. That's terrible. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. I reckon we've got a single dog here, and this is the one that scratched um, beside the trap there yesterday. So I'm just hoping he's come back down because we've set another couple of traps there, and uh, if he's come back down to do the same thing, he might be in for a surprise. So. Our luck's got to change sooner or later, so hopefully it's sooner. Come on, come on. Where are you? Okay, what do we got here? What has done that? Something has exposed that trap right out, but there's no sign. There's no dog sign. And that's a real puzzle. I'm trying to work out what's actually... Um, what's actually scratched this, but I can't see a track. Okay, what I've done is I've just made it like a real scratch, like a dog has come here really scratched, and I've put a bit of the dirt I've scratched off it over the top of where the trap set is, and left it as a blind. What I'll do now is I'll put a bit more scat up the top here and try and get that dog to come along and sniff at that, forget that this is in here. So what I'm gonna try and do is go for a back foot catch on this dog. Leave it as a blind, change where I put my scent, and uh, yeah, if he wants fun and games, let's give him fun and games. Okay, we have got a dog here scratching. I put the scent, some dog pee, dominant dog pee on that rock. And you see a dog print there, and it scratched and scratched all around it, okay? And that was its scat over there. My blind trap is here. Blind trap's in there. Righto, I'm gonna try and make this dog step around this side. If it doesn't know that trap's in the ground, that's good. Let's get it to walk this side of that rock and do it again. I'll put a bit more dog urine on it and I'll probably put a branch, get a branch of a tree and cover that um, around the trap uh, so that it gets the dog over this side. And again, let's go for a back foot catch. Okay, we're coming in here to where there's got to be a dog. Come on, come on. Come on, three traps set here. No tracks. No tracks, haven't seen a track. Come on. Another trap up there. No marks on the ground. No at all. I don't know what to say. We've just been through so many good sets. And we've seen tracks of one dog. I've got the fourth day blues. 
should sit down and write a country song, I reckon. Okay, we've got the dogs after a boar here. He's come along here and there's more of about eight pigs on the side of the track. And the boys have gone after this boar, got him down the gully in front of us. Send a hook to him. Got a little run out pig. Yeah. So good. Let's get the other ones. Well, this is the start of the morning. Uh, five for day six, checking night five, and uh, yeah, it's been pretty slow going so far. We've got one dog and three ball pigs. There simply isn't much sign around here, and as I'll, I'll show you later on, there um, they did a 1080 baiting program through here and they did it really well. I mean, they took a lot of time, a lot of care, worked out where they saw their dogs, travel tracks, tied the baits up, marked them. Uh, yeah, as with just about everything this family does, they did a professional job. Okay, there's an old Aboriginal mate of Dad's once said to him, he said, they got foot, him leave trap. It'll be there somewhere now. We've searched and searched and searched. When we do find tracks, yeah, like, uh, we're not missing them. It's gone. We look for a bug pug. We're gonna look for a bug pug. It's hard to tell after that rain if you can find the real soft bull dust patches. Then you can sort of get an idea of what else has travelled through there, what sort of marks. There's like a big jigsaw puzzle you've got to put together. There's only three areas that there seems to be a dog working in, or dogs working in, and that's consistent. So I'm starting to think a lot of these areas are very clean. And for the bleeding hearts that think, oh, he's wiping the dingoes out, I could go for 50. 100 kilometers up here and there's hardly another house so there's a lot of dogs there is a lot of dogs back here in the mountain country and if they're behaving themselves well good on you stay up there i have not seen any signs through here at all sit sit just sit there you don't, want, you don't want no bling. I don't see any sign at all here at the moment. All I'm doing is wasting my time, I think, in this area and wasting the landowner's dollars. Now, I don't want to do either of those things, so I think we'll pull this trap and we'll just drop this leg off the line and we'll keep the traps where the best sign is.
good boar tracks on the road here, the dogs are out. Pick this guy up and get somewhere. He might have been early on in the night too, so his scent might be dead by now, but you never know. Down here, so we can we'll just sneak through the gate with the 2G3 and shoot this fella. We're in the business to get these things on the ground. And that's what we do. Brandon. Brandon. Off. Brandon. It's all show, mate. It's good to have an audience. <laughs> what would you shoot our friend for? So this was the boar that we saw the tracks of way back up there, probably two, three kilometres further back up the hill. And uh, we've just been poking along here. The tracks have been going off the road and come back on the track and the dogs are just jogging along. Anyway, got to the gateway and here it is just feeding down here where the uh, the cattle lick had been sort of put out there a while back. Just eating off the top of the ground, this big old guy. And uh, yeah, no use putting the dogs at risk by putting them on him. We just snuck up close and give him one behind the ear with the 2 do 3 No, Brandon. It's antisocial. Way to go, Norell. Yep. The woke mob will be upset if I show too much blood. I'm showing realism the way it is. What well, was fast and furious? The mob of pigs come across the road, grab a tree to a tree, whack two of them. The dog's got the other one over here. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. Off. 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 Good dogs. Nice. No. One's over here somewhere. One's there. Mossy, good girl, good girl, come on, settle down. Mossy, good girl. That's enough. Off, off, Mossy, off. Off, off, come on, off. Good girl. Good girl, that's good girl. Settle down now, settle down, settle down. Dog's got another one. It's all over here. All right, good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good girl, Mossy. Good boy. Good boy, Baron. Everybody hot from chasing pigs. <laughs> Even me. Buggy, buggy. Good dogs. Buggy, buggy. Good dogs. Okay, we're approaching the trap sets that I think we've got the best possible chance to catch a dog in. Have they worked? What's going wrong, mate? One's been kicked out. Cattle might have kicked that out. No, it's been scratched. See its scratch marks. It missed that one, hasn't scratched that. It's come right up and stood there. Look at that. Okay, we've got a super tough dog here. 
That's like three times now it's, it's taken on that trap. Um, okay, what can I do? I can put a blind trap in the middle of the road, but other people are driving through here. It started scratching by the look of it. It started scratching probably eight or ten inches away from that trap. I think it's just smelling the disturbed dirt, wherever the dirt's disturbed. And because it's coming on them straight away, it's coming on them just after I've set them, and it'd be able to, you know, see that the, the dirt was freshly turned. One over this other side here now has been in for a couple of days, and... Um, yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't noticed it's there. It hasn't tried to scratch it. So maybe I can fresh refresh it with a little bit of, say, urine further away and get that dog to maybe come in and try and scratch the urine and try it on a black back foot. But I think I'll try another blind trap over here as well. Okay, I seem to be getting super unlucky. Okay, I did all that scratching there. I did that scratch. Um, the dog did that one. And the dog did that. And this is the one that the um, the bandicoot had dug right out. And I covered it back up. The centre of the pan is right there. Right, right there. There's the closest track. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Three more traps here, two more on the other property, and that'll be the end of the day for us. We've only got one big boar and three sows so far. We're giving it a red hot go. Okay, we're approaching the area where we've got this cunning dog. It's only yeah, like a kilometre from the house. So this dog. I think knows every trick in the book. It's so wary. Now this roll back here now. There's some tracks on the road. I don't know, there's dog tracks right there on the road. Yeah, pig and dog tracks there. What do you reckon, Brandon? Is this morning the morning? What would you know? Brandon's smelling hard. Skunk's doing the same, so there's some scent here. I'd say there's dog scent on the road. Oh, no. <laughs> We've got it. That's when I thought we were no good. There it is. There is our trap scratcher. Right there. Got it. Right, we've got it in one of the sets that it's been scratching. And uh, it took a few days, but we've got it. Right on. That's the break. Lovely looking dog. If I only knew what you knew. It's part of me wants to just go and let it go. But I can't, that's not the job. My job is to take these animals. So let's get a shot as quick as I can. Right on. If you were as half as smart as that dog I just shot, you'd be brilliant. Sit. Sit. That blind trap is still there with the chain. I left that chain exposed. Trap sets there blind. And this was the one that had been scratching. Good in a four spring Victor. Only by a couple of toes. Yeah. Big healthy male dog. Not young either. Man of grey around the muzzle. Blind in one eye. Teeth worn.
Taste one right down. Very old dog, that one. Yeah, to me, this is a quite a high-grade dog. Like, people talk about pure dogs. We should leave the pure dogs, all the rest of it. It's such a hard issue. This whole thing is such a hard issue. A lot of the people that are saying we've got to leave the dingoes be, they'll happily go down to a butcher shop and buy their meat. They're not all vegans. And even if they are vegans or vegetarians, they turn a blind eye when they buy their um, fruit and veggies and because they don't own up to the fact that to grow a lot of that stuff, you've really got to spray the heck out of everything and kill so much or erect great big greenhouses uh, to put everything in. And that's okay. And they're the ones that are calling climate change, you know, shut down your mining, uh, all the rest of it, shut down industry yet they will use the trappings of society. They want no more coal mines, but they're quite happy to walk on concrete, not knowing where fly ash comes from to make your concrete. Um, hypocrisy, that's what I find with it. Most of these people, hypocrisy is just out of sight. In the areas where these things are staying away from people, in the national parks and in a lot of our forestry areas where they're behaving themselves, leave them be, right? Get rid of the real crossbred ones as much as we can. Um, but I wouldn't go and target a dog like this if it wasn't causing damage. These are the ones that are breeding the and training, the ones that are then impacting on agriculture. And like I said, if you want to eat, uh, unless you want to eat the bugs, uh, unless you're someone that wants to see the world population reduced to one billion, um, you realise that we've got to have food production. Yeah, my two bob anyway. It is just sad for me because if I wish I knew what this dog knew, so the most we can do, well, the best we can do is is treat it with respect, okay? It's a tough job. Someone's got to do it.